I just need to put him in the overhead locker. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the best and funniest British TV mockumentaries that aren't fronted by Philomena Kunk. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. I'm not actually a doctor or a mayor, but I can get you the certificates as part of a 36 month D-War bar contract that you will not be able to get out of. Number 10. Victoria Wood as seen on TV Could you tell us just a little bit about Bessie, Sir Dave? It's a biographical musical. Yes. Yes, we know, as seen on TV is technically a sketch show, but it has a handful of sketches that are made in the mockumentary style, and we'd be lying if we said those segments weren't extremely iconic precursors to what is today a huge genre. I mean, Bessie Bunter is a fat schoolgirl. That's the show, in a nutshell. It's about being fat. One of the more famous mockumentary segments involves the musical Bessie, a parody musical based on the life and times of fictional comic strip character Bessie Bunter. The initial star of the musical, Carla, is sacked for being too slim and replaced, of course, by Wood. One day I was Bessie Bunter. Who was she? She was just a punter. She was nobody. The late and great Victoria Wood was ahead of her time in so many ways, and we'd be remiss not to give her the credit she deserves. Yes! Number 9. The Day to Day. The brainchild of comedy titans Armando Iannucci and Chris Morris, The Day to Day was mocking major news shows and their sensationalist reporting. The Prince has been preparing for his ordeal for the last two months by attending practice prison in a Rolls Royce factory, sharing his cell with an old school friend. You could argue that it's not quite a mockumentary, but with fake interviews, fake news stories and plenty of talking heads, it fits the bill. Like as seen on TV, it also incorporates more straightforward mockumentary sections into its format, with documentaries about various workplaces appearing regularly. Just uh, keep the change, it doesn't matter. Keep the change. Well, I mean, I haven't got the exact money, but I, you know, I mean, it's only a pound. Well, I can't. I, I don't have the authority to just, like, you know, give you 25 pence. Most notable is The Pool, a two-part section about the day-to-day -day running of a leisure centre and its very disinterested employees. But there was another section called The Office, which looks very prescient in hindsight. I'm the office manager. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I'm responsible for um, the... Uh, the, the, the run, I'm the office manager. I'm... Uh, 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 yeah, all right, stop it! Number eight, Soft Border Patrol. Premiering less than two years after the Brexit vote, this comedy is about border agents monitoring things between Ireland and Northern Ireland. So yeah, that's what I do day in day out. People phone up looking compensation for money they've lost about Brexit. That's my job to make sure they don't get any money. It's really about the perils of too much bureaucracy, as the one border office is overseen by four different governments. Northern Ireland, the Republic, the UK and the EU. You're getting carried away, that's Brussels talking there. We're, we're literally building a dam, we're not building the shard. The soft border patrol contends with various absurd situations, like a plot to build a dam across a stream to stop the Republic from getting water from Ulster, as well as people trying to smuggle various items between the two countries, including washing powder and HP sauce at one point. It really brings the absurdity of Brexit's impact on Ireland into sharp focus. I've come up with a campaign to stop young people getting in to paramilitary violence, okay, and being we tramps. Number seven, this country. There are a lot of TV shows about London and other major cities, but what about the people in the Cotswolds? Yeah, very funny. Don't make me move it myself, please, mate. <laughs> mate, <laughs> please be serious. This is my pitch, yeah? The series follows two cousins, Kerry and Curtin, as they try to find something interesting to do in their rural village. It conveys the inanity of rural life perfectly, as the cousins grapple with the almost oppressive boredom of their hometown. Curtin went for a very bad lying face. Yeah, I did, yeah. That's the thing, I lied so much, I still don't know what's real life and what's just plain lies. There's the high drama of a scarecrow competition, an intimidating but appalling tattoo artist, and the logistics of how to divide your frozen food so that it can be fairly shared out. 
We can all relate to being in situations like this. I'm really sorry, Curtin, but at the end of the day, it is my oven, so I am going to have top shelf. Just don't cut my pizza in half, please. I won't. <laughs> Number six, Scott Squad. He challenged the cops to the big slide. Now he's banged up in the big hoose. This series follows a group of Scottish coppers on the beat, parodying the countless police shows where officers grapple with hilariously harmless lawbreakers. For example, we've got this fella here. This is Albert McKinstry. An absolute wrong'un. Just like in real life, the Scott Squad regularly deal with trivial situations and pointless crimes, like theft of an occupied hearse when it's en route to a funeral. That's something at least. That's somebody's body, I know, too. Guy will be spinning his grave. Well, he's not in it yet. Well. As is often the case with mockumentaries, much of the dialogue is improvised by the cast in the moment, lending it that coveted authenticity. Low-ranking PCs even go after a beauty influencer for giving her viewers tips on how to contour and how to shoplift. The camera loves this YouTube tube, but the judge didn't, so her next pose was for her mugshot. Number 5. W1A You wouldn't think that a TV show parodying the BBC made by the BBC would be all that incisive, but you'd be wrong. Hello? Yeah, hi, is that Ian Fletcher? Yes, it is, yes. Cool, yes, so I'm Will, I'm like, I'm meeting you? Yes. So, like, where actually are you? Because I'm like, I'm, I'm basically here. W1A boldly portrays the Beeb as being riddled with incompetence on every level, as its producers and executives fight fires of their own making every single day. It was created because of the success of another series, 2012, which fictionalised the preparations for the 2012 Olympics in London. Now, I'm not being funny or anything, but this guy is in all probability a total nutcase, OK? But his thing is, there aren't enough Cornish voices and faces on the BBC, and that Cornish issues in general are underrepresented. With an all-star British cast led by Hugh Bonneville, W1A surprised everyone with just how relentless it was with its mockery of the corporation. You're telling me we've lost Claire Balding? Ah, uh, well, we... I mean, if what David is saying is true, and I'm hearing it for the first time now, then it does look as if we might have lost Claire. It's a wonder any TV shows get made when everybody working there is incapable of making basic decisions. Number four, Brass Eye. More from Chris Morris, Brass Eye was the even more outrageous follow-up to the day-to-day. -day. So is it any wonder people are afraid of technology? Technology! Oh my God. Rather than parodying news in general, Brass Eye went after investigative shows like Panorama and Dispatches, taking a close look at just one topic. But Brass Eye notoriously tricked various celebrities into endorsing absurd causes that they really should have seen through from the beginning. Of course, some people say it would be vulnerable in a strong wind. But for goodness sake, who's to say there's going to be a strong wind? Vertical farms, good science at work. This included railing against the new drug cake, fighting for the rights of an elephant whose trunk has gotten stuck up its bottom, and trying to make heavy electricity illegal in the UK. I was offered 500 quid Hello. to grow a stomach full of shoulders. shoulders. It could stomach. have been worse. Shortly after this, Morris would become too recognisable for his grift to work on the country's C-list celebrities. Number three, come fly with me. Life jacket is now mine for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, it deflates automatically and I simply swim back into plane and pay for more. Matt Lucas and David Walliams' next big outing after Little Britain, and one of their last until they're falling out, Come Fly With Me followed the lives of the employees of an international airport. From the girls at the front desk to the airline owners, Come Fly With Me lampooned everybody, creating many memorable characters. Some passengers do resent the extra charges, but just last week we did lose an elderly gentleman in a stampede. All that was left was a shoe. We've all experienced being confused by airport rules and frustrated by delayed flights, which makes Come Fly With Me a universal comedy. It also points out the bizarreness of airport reality TV being such a popular genre, or even a genre at all. Can I see some ID? You've got the ID. You don't work here, do you? Number two, people just do nothing. Caught in limbo between central London and the middle of nowhere, People Just Do Nothing examines a group of down-and-out young people in Hounslow. What is Corrupt FM? 
Simple. It's an urban powerhouse slash radio station slash family unit. Do you know what I mean? Ostensibly running a pirate radio station in Brentford, the gang at Corrupt FM are bad at almost everything they try to do. Their music is abysmal, their radio station isolated and unpopular, and their ambitions consistently unrealistic. Has he ever been in trouble with the law? Yeah, he's been in trouble a few times, but it's always been like, you know, silly little things like, you know, dealing, GBH, hate crimes. People Just Do Nothing was so popular during its run that it eventually got a feature film, Big in Japan, where they bafflingly find out they've got Japanese fans. They head east to pursue superstardom in Tokyo with disastrous results. You see that? Look at that mirror. <laughs> I like to watch. Number one, The Office. It could only ever be The Office in our number one spot, and it absolutely deserves that honour. Why should they be worried? Yeah? They trust me implicitly. I've said there's not going to be redundancies, so that becomes gospel. Unconditional trust. It made the stars household names as they played the put-upon employees of a paper company in Slough. They work the most boring jobs imaginable under the stewardship of Ricky Gervais's David Brent. When uh, people say, oh, would you rather be thought of as a funny man or a great boss? My answer is the same. To me, they're not mutually exclusive. Brent's pathological desire to be liked by his underlings makes him desperately embarrassing. There's Keenan. Cock. The staff go to great lengths to amuse themselves and break up the boredom of their humdrum lives, resorting to pranks and skiving to add just a little bit of excitement to the torturous 9 to 5s. Let us know in the comments who your favourite fictional documentarian is. Do you know what HP stands for? No. Hewlett Packard? Houses of Parliament. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.